once again to International Television Wrestling, one of the greatest professional wrestling programs ever seen on television here in Atlantic Canada. This is Championship Night, the American Wrestling Association World Heavyweight Championship bout featuring the champion Rick Martel against the challenge of our very own Leo Burke. Thousands have gathered at the Halifax Forum to witness this outstanding attraction. We'll be going to ringside momentarily to get the proceedings underway. Prior to that activity, we visited the dressing rooms of both combatants to get their feelings, their views on the night ahead. We talked first with the champion and in the dressing room of Rick Martel. Let's find out what he had to say. We're in the dressing room of AWA World Heavyweight Champion Rick Martel. Rick, uh, as we come into the dressing room, you were involved in very serious calisthenics, physical activity. Is that normal prior to uh, an event such as we're about to see this evening? Yes, Mr. Fleming, every single time that I step into that ring to defend the world's title, I always do warm up the best I can because I know that my opponents will try to beat me at any time in that ring. And if they do, at the very beginning of the match, I will be ready and warmed up for them. Rick, tonight is a night all of Atlantic Canada has waited for. You're meeting one of the greatest, if not the greatest wrestler to ever come out of the Maritime Provinces, Leo Burke. What are your feelings about the challenge that he's offering to your world title? Well, definitely the pressure is on both of us. As Leo Burke is trying to get this title away from me and me defending from him because all the world, all the promoters from all over the world are watching very closely. The AWA Championship Committee is watching very closely because no doubt Leo Burke will be the toughest challenge to me since I am world champion. Rick, uh, we know it's a very special moment for you returning to the Maritimes as a world champion, and uh, we do offer you the very best of luck uh, in this big match tonight. Well, for me, I must admit, it's a thrill because I first started right here in the Maritimes, and for me to return here 10 years later as a world champion, believe me, Mr. Fleming, it's a great thrill. A very positive thinking, as you would expect a champion, would be Rick Martel as he approaches this major event in his professional wrestling career. We then went to the dressing room of Leo Burke, the challenger. A rather surprising visit for us, as you'll see in this particular commentary and this visit to Burke's dressing room. This is Rudy Kay. We had intended to talk to the challenger for this world title, Leo Burke, when entering Leo Burke's dressing room. We're not apparently going to be talking to Leo. Perhaps, Rudy, you can explain why. I can say one thing, Clary. You're just like everybody else around. Everybody seems not to be able to know what's wrong with Leo Burke tonight that he don't want to talk to you. He doesn't want to talk to you because he's got a lot on his mind with this big match coming up, this World Heavyweight Championship match. But another thing, the attack that he had on him a couple nights back, I want to say one thing. The guy that attacked him didn't have anything to do with the match that Leo was involved in, but he still got attacked. And that man was no other than Kendo Nagasaki. And Kendo Nagasaki, you attacked Leo. You were vicious. You almost crippled him. You tried to stop him from getting a world championship match against Rick Martel, but it just didn't work. But it didn't only come from you. There was somebody else behind you and it was no other than nature boy Dylan, but it didn't work. Leo Burke, he doesn't want to talk tonight. He's bothered. He's got that on his mind. He's got the world championship match. But Nagasaki, I'm sure that he hasn't forgotten you and he hasn't forgotten Dylan. And uh, Clary, I've got another guy here that has something to say about what happened to Leo a few days back. Well, we see the beast who is attending to Leo in the background joining us and perhaps you can shed a little further light on, uh, on the situation. Well, Clary, I want to say one thing. Nagasaki, you think you're tough, right? You've been here, you tried to cripple my brother Rudy, you tried to cripple Bobby, you almost completed cripple Hubert Gallant, you tried to cripple Leo Burke. We know that you have your eye on Nagasaki, Leo Burke must have his thoughts towards Nagasaki as well because of what has been reported to have happened in terms of Nagasaki attempting to knock Burke out of this championship match as a challenger. What are your thoughts? Will Leo be in fact looking for him? What happens from here? Leo, his father and his mother are my father and my mother. Actually, 
We're brothers, right? He's got guts. He's from the Maritime. Narasaki, you ain't gonna stop him from nothing. The only thing you're doing right now, the only thing you're doing, you're not, not smart enough to know that. You're just building up a little fire, but it's getting bigger and bigger and hotter and hotter. And Leo is a man enough to cripple you. And after he gets you crippled, I'm beastly enough when that you down just about dead, I'll go there and tear the rest apart of you. Okay, Nasagi, you got it straight now. And if you're too stupid to understand, your stooge there that runs around with a stick like an idiot, I know he understand. He will tell you, Jim Dillon, you're standing there with a big grin. You think you're smart? You know, you know this man, right? You know old beastie, and you know they avert. Tell your stooges. They'll know us too before we're all done. Okay, there we have it. Very surprising series of events indeed, coming from the dressing room of one Leo Burt. It leads us to believe that there must be some truth to the accusations made. Only time will tell. We may find out much more later on. At any rate, we've talked to the two combatants, the champion Rick Martell, the challenger. Well, we didn't have a chance to talk with Leo Burke, but we saw him and we did hear the story behind that particular activity. We'll be back. World Championship action coming your way shortly, right after we pause for these messages. We're back with more international television wrestling world championship event. Now making his way to the ring, the American Wrestling Association world champion, Rick Martell. For the world heavyweight championship, here comes Leo Bird. We're going to meet special dignitaries and sports personalities. Let's go to ring announcer Scott Kane. Introductions now taking place as sports personalities. Ladies and gentlemen, when it comes to the parade, our next guest has done it all. He is generally regarded as the best of his time. He was called upon on many occasions to apply the rules in a very important match. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome back Mr. Fred Hayter. A name from the great past of professional wrestling, Fred Hayter has been called to the ring area, a true gentleman and a great sportsman, a great referee. The crowd reacting to an appearance. What a pleasure to see Fred Hader once again. Pound for pound, our next guest is one of the greatest Canadian middleweights of all time. He held the middleweight title for 10 years, defended the title seven times in that span. Ladies and gentlemen, the stylish boxer, David Downey. Dave Downey, a name synonymous with champions here in Atlantic Canada, being introduced to the ring area, shaking hands with the combatants. Nice to see Dave Downey. Canada's Olympic hopeful in this 1984 Olympic year, Wayne Gordon being introduced, meeting Leo Burke. Also from Lower Sackville, Nova Scotia, 
one of amateur boxing's most respected and knowledgeable coaches, Canada's 1984 Olympic boxing coach, and soon off to Los Angeles with his boxing team, he wants Coach Leo Burke in amateur boxing. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Taylor Gordon. Here comes Taylor Gordon, coach of Canada's 1984 Olympic boxing team. Nice to see Taylor in attendance here for this championship match this evening as he expresses his best to the combatants. One of pro hockey's most colorful and well liked figures. Please welcome the former coach of the Nova Scotia Voyagers and just recently put in the cooking staff of the Toronto Maple Leafs, John Brophy. John Brophy being introduced to the crowd here, a mixed reaction, newly appointed to the coaching staff of the Toronto Maple Leafs. Next is a hard training, hard working manager for world champion Rick Martel. Please welcome Richard Video. Richard Vignol. The manager of world champion Rick Martel offering his best to challenger Leo Berg. And from Minneapolis, Minnesota, representing the American Wrestling Association, we're pleased to welcome him to the Maritimes, ladies and gentlemen, Dick Marshall. And here comes Dick Marshall representing the American Wrestling Association from Minneapolis, making his way to the ring and momentarily the chief players in this world championship event, Leo Burke and Rick Martell will be formally introduced to the crowd. taking both men to the center area. Joining us now, Taylor Gordon. Taylor, so delighted to see you here this evening as one of the great sports personalities here in Atlantic Canada. What awaits you in the next few days ahead as you prepare your team for this year's events? Well, Clary, we're leaving on uh, Wednesday for, Los, uh, for Burnaby, BC. We're gonna be in training in British Columbia until the 25th of July. And then we're going to take the team to right to the site in Los Angeles and on to the Olympic Games. Taylor, good luck to you and the team. We'll be watching every move out there. Thanks a lot. I know that the Nova Scotia and Atlantic Canada fans will be cheering for us, and I hope that uh, we're able to provide them with some real excitement from Los Angeles. Thank you, Taylor Gordon. We'll be back with our World Championship action right after we pause for these messages. championship action is underway. The challenger, Leo Burke, with his back to the camera, the champion, Rick Martell. This should be a titanic struggle. Two outstanding athletes, professional athletes, young men who have a wealth of experience. Thousands of fans have jammed the Halifax Forum to witness one of the most outstanding programs ever presented in Atlantic Canada. And we hope you're enjoying our television presentation of this action. I International Wrestling, back after an absence of just a few years, has 
arrived once again at its popularity of just a few years ago. Thousands of fans turning out wherever international wrestling appears throughout these Atlantic provinces. Again, the likes of Leo Burke, Rudy Kay, The Beast, Bobby Kay, Prince Coco, Hubert Gallant, the nature boy James J. Dillon, Kendo Nagasaki, the Black Ninja. But for the moment, all eyes are trained in one direction. Center ring, the Halifax Forum. The championship of the world at stake. Leo Burke, a headlock, applied to the champion, Rick Martel. Keep in mind, it is two out of three falls required. The best two out of three falls required to either win the championship for the first time, as would be the case of Leo Burke, or retain the title, as would be the case for one Rick Martel. And it seems so many short years ago, we saw Rick Martel begin his professional wrestling career right here in these maritime provinces. He recalls it fondly, but at the same time, realizes that his greater experience that led him to world championship caliber came in so other, many other parts of the world and from so many other people. It's a tribute to him in one respect that he has returned to this region to defend the prize of all prizes, the world title. What a night. A successful career behind Leo Burke already. What lies ahead for him? Well, if you could read the minds of the thousands who have gathered here tonight, I'm sure they would perhaps speak as one. That thought being Leo Burke, our new world champion. What a pleasant thought. Is it to be? The time ahead will tell for all of us. We're delighted to be able to present this most exciting event to you at home as well. Referee, again, one of the class officials in the world today in the world of professional wrestling, Lou Brunn, in very close to the action, watching every single move, every single second. Leo Burke attempting to retain that headlock, and he did. You know, just about a week ago, we were talking with Leo, had a chance to spend a few quiet moments discussing his career to date, discussing the days ahead. Of course, in particular, the world title shot that he had coming to him, which has now arrived. But as you recall what happened earlier in this program, the interview in Leo Burke's dressing room, the black ninja Kendis, Kendo Nagasaki has entered even this event. His name has come forward. The charges were laid by The Beast and Rudy Kay, but we believe not without foundation. It is difficult to believe that James J. Dillon would have any part in that event. Martel pressing and pressing, attempting to break the headlock Leo Burke hanging on, hanging in. Hangs in to the delight of the crowd. It's hard to believe that Kendo Nagasaki possibly being directed by one James J. Dillon attempted to seriously injure Leo Burke prior to this match. But that is the report. That is apparently what happened. Nice takedown, hip toss by Leo Burke. Headlock, sit down, position by Burke. The crowd in great anticipation, watching each and every move in the early stages of this world title bout. Great to see Dick Marshall, the representative from the American Wrestling Alliance here to be on hand. Should the title change hands, should the belt 
change midriffs, then a representative would be on hand to officially handle that responsibility. Great to see so many people, so many dignitaries on hand here, as you saw them introduced earlier. One of the greatest Canadian middleweights of them all, Dave Downey. Of course, young Wayne Gordon, an Olympic hopeful. His dad, Taylor Gordon, coach of Canada's Olympic team. Fred Hader, what a great sight. So many professional wrestling fans will recall his many evenings in the ring, separating the likes of Glenn Hughes and Bull Montana, Sal Balbo, the list goes on and on. The heyday of professional wrestling and great to see that it is returning under the banner of international wrestling. Headlock continues to be applied by Leo Burke. Rick Martel having great difficulty in defending and finding a defense against that hole. As applied by Leo Burke. He's come close to breaking, but has not been able to attain it as yet. Now to the stand-up position. Both men jockeying for position. Rick Martel trying to find that defense. Elbow drives to the midsection. Now Martel breaks it. Down he goes. Burke up and over. Burke off the ropes. Martel up and over. Burke coming in. And a beautiful flying head scissors by Rick Martel. Martel ready for a move, but Burke was ready for him. Again, the headlock applied by Leo Burke. And the fans are enjoying this one. Again, referee Lou Brun in checking at all times for possible submission. And as the match continues, because of the length of this match, we're going to go away for just a while. Should a fall occur during our absence, we of course will recall it and replay it for you. We'll be back with more World Championship action right after we pause for these messages. Martel head first into the ring buckle. Now a reverse. Leo Burke. Wow, did he go head first into the ring post? A reverse by Martel. Totally surprising. Leo Burke caught off balance and off guard. Now Burke at the receiving end of some driving knees by Rick Martel. Referee Lou Brun watching it closely. Asking Burke, is it submission? That of course would not end the match because it is a two out of three falls event. Leo Burke, still in some great difficulty. Attempting to execute a counter move so the hammer lock is applied by Rick Martel. Now, Martel spreading both arms of Leo Burke, driving his knee into the mid back. The throngs on hand here, attempting to encourage Burke but to no avail as we continue to move along here in this championship match. Referee Lou Brun asks the questions, do you submit? Do you give up? Leo Burke says no.
any ineffectiveness on the part of Leo Burke. We hate to and do not have to alibi for the man, but we have to wonder, did Kendo Nagasaki cause any damage to Leo Burke that has followed through into this match? Now Leo Burke, Leo Burke attempting to break, to break that hole by Rick Martel. Can he do it? Leo Burke driving his head in close, using every ounce of his strength at hand. Rick Martel trying to fight him off. Martel not able, or was able, to hang on. And as this match continues, we're going to move away for a moment because of the continuing length of the match. Should a fall occur, we'll report it to you right after we pause for these messages. We're back, and as yet, a fall not, has not been executed by either Rick Martel or Leo Burke. This is unbelievably constant action from Martel and Burke. Martel holds the upper hand. Burke not able to find that magic counter hold that will relieve the pressure and allow him to offer some offense at this stage in this world event. Again, it's a two out of three falls for the American Wrestling Alliance World Heavyweight Championship. Now, again, Burke. Only strength will help here. Burke driving those powerful legs into the ring floor, attempting to get the leverage necessary. Martel looks a little shaky. Martel looks shaky. But a beautiful reverse. Credit where credit is due, and Rick Martel just rolled with it, hung in, and did hang on. What beautiful wrestling. I'm not sure Leo Burke would agree at this very moment, but the fans here are enjoying every minute of it. Both men have to be beginning to show some signs of the tremendous pace that they've sustained from the beginning of this match. Now Burke. He does move. One, two. That would have been quite a reversal of form had Burke been able to. Now, an arm drag by Burke, trying to get some composure, trying to regain stamina, but Martel shows no mercy, pounding the arm of Burke. Burke replying with an elbow to the forehead. The crowd reacting. Watch Leo Burke drops his man. Oh, what a move by Leo Burke. Martel reeling in pain. The count is on both men. There is Rick Martel. Look at it. Now Leo Burke. A smattering of blood starting to flow from his forehead. Again, would that be a result of his confrontation with Kendo Nagasaki? Now Burke driving a right hand into the midsection. Fires a right hand to the head of Rick Martel. And the crowd reacting. The crowd is excited. Burke, a forearm smash, sends Martel once again to the mat. Burke up on his feet. Martel back against the ropes. Martel says, no, not now. Burke says, yes, right now. Burke turned in the corner. Forearm smash once again by Leo Burke. Martel's trying to shake it off. Back into the corner. 
He drives an elbow smash into Burke's head. And another. Burke retaliating. Leo Burke, a reverse, drives Martell in, up and over, oh, a beautiful body toss over. Martell, the small of his back, appears to be injured. Burke, stalking his man, standing over him. Martell backed into the corner. The crowd is becoming frantic. A driving block by Burke into the midsection of Martell, drives the right hand. Burke on top of his man. Now Burke. Both men are physically tiring. It's going to take the greatest of stamina. At this stage, Martell up. Body slam by Burke. Burke. Dropping over Martell. A count of one, two. Push off by Martell. Now Burke. Martell looks to be the first regaining his feet. Burke is up. Grabs Ricky Martell from the back. Up. A drop. Rick Martell could be in trouble. Leo Burke. Up and over on his band. One, two. Again, a push off by Martel. Oh, what an exciting world championship event. Now Martel grabs Burke. A reverse out, a sleeper applied by Leo Burke. The crowd is going absolutely wild. They're standing all over the forum. Can Leo Burke hang on? Can Ricky Martell get out of the sleeper hole? Leo Burke has it applied. Referee Lou Brown is in close. Burke has the sleeper hole. Two. Three. Leo Burke has won the first fall of this world championship match. On the first fall of this championship match. It is two out of three falls. Here comes the announcement. The bell sounds, Martel's manager, Richard Vigneault, attempting to urge his man on. Martel trying to stay away from Burke. He wants no part of him at this moment. Burke, of course, would dearly love to be able to apply that sleeper hold again. Martel hops out of the ring area. A time saver for Martel. He's buying time right now. Keep in mind, this is a 60 minute time limit match. Time is definitely back in. Martel does not agree it should be, but the count was on him. International wrestling. The outstanding sports success in Canada in this 1984 year. What a return, what a great comeback. And you can see it where it appears in your area. Leo Burke has Martell back in the corner. Burke has Martell in the ring center, pounding him to the back. You know what's surprising? That Leo Burke has shown this stamina. After an apparent beating he took from Kendo Nagasaki just a few short days ago. You heard The Beast and Rudy Kay much earlier in this program comment on that situation. Now, Leo Burke, a backdrop. 
Leo Burke attempting to move over with whatever energy, one, two, and a push off by Rick Bartel. Burke in on his man quickly. Whips him into the ring. The abdominal stretch applied by Rick Martell. A reverse by Martell. Burke moving into the hole. Is it submission for Burke? The question is being asked by referee Lou Brun. Lou Brun asking, is it submission? The stretch applied by Rick Martell, apparently no submission. Oh, beautiful move by Burke. A lovely hip toss. Leo Burke and Rick Martell have been going nonstop, constant action from the sound of the first bell over 50 minutes ago. That's 5-0, yes, 50 minutes ago, and it's hard to believe they can continue to show what energy they are displaying. Martell colliding. Burke ending up on the timekeeper's table, which is smashed. A count is on Burke. But Martell is on the ring mat too. Leo Burke outside the ring area. The count being affected by referee Lou Brun. Leo Burke now raises himself. Martell standing somewhat in readiness. Grabs his man. Now Martell up and over. Oh, he's down one. Two, oh, a kickoff by Martell. Leo Burke was a split second away from a world title. 55 minutes have been counted out, only five minutes remaining in the one hour time limit. Martell driving a foot into the back of Leo Burke. I cannot remember in all my years of watching professional wrestling ever having seen such sustained professional class action as we've witnessed here in this World Championship event. This is what people have been asking for, what they've been looking for, and they are seeing, and you are seeing, Leo Burke off the ropes here he comes knee drop to the throat area martell looks to be almost out can burke raise himself can he find the energy leo burke is almost out himself again i have to ask the question of myself and perhaps generally Whatever beating Leo Burke took at the hands of Kendo Nagasaki, what effect did it have on his performance here in this world title match? Maybe we'll never know. Leo Burke drops his bat. We're down to the final minutes of this match. Leo Burke with a fall could win the world title. The count is now on both men. Leo Burke is exhausted. Rick Martell is approaching, is approaching exhaustion. Three minutes, the official time remaining in this match. But keep in mind, it would only take three short seconds for Leo Burke to accomplish his mission. Headlock by Burke. Martell off the rope. Airplane spin by Leo Burke. 
Where does the man get the energy? Drops his man. More of a side drop than a back drop. Again, the count is on both men. Referee Lou Grimes counting both men. Martell trying to gain some sense of what's going on. He has taken his share of the beating, but Leo Burke has not escaped. Leo Burke winding up with that one. Rick Martell driving a left hand. Leo Burke off the rope. Oh, what an arm splash from Burke. Sent Martell reeling across the ring. Just incredible action as it continues. Rick, Rick Martell, the sleeper has been applied by Leo Burke. Continues to hang in. Rick Martell fighting for his life, fighting for his title. Leo Burke fighting just as hard to take that title from him. The sleeper. Burke is backed into the corner. Finally, the grip is loosened. Martell whipped into the corner, and again, the sleeper is applied. A very anxious. Richard Vigneault, Rick Martel's manager, watches anxiously each passing second. Can Martel? No, the bell sounds. No. to attempt to find out what the official decision is. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the referee announces Leo Burke has won one fall. However, two falls were required. Rick Martell retains the World Heavyweight Championship. A two out of three falls event. The winner and still world heavyweight champion, Rick Martell. Rick Martell, I want to be the first to offer my congratulations for retaining the world heavyweight championship. The eyes of the wrestling world are on Halifax, Nova Scotia and the Halifax Forum tonight. And in front of these millions and millions of viewers that are watching right now, I want to challenge. Nobody but nobody is having a match with Nagasaki until he faces Leo Burke. <laughs> A lot of you people don't know. Major Boy Dylan, you stoop down as low, as low as any man can by having Nagasaki, having Nagasaki earlier this week attack me from behind and tried to cripple me just so that you would get a shot at Rick Martell. Well, again, it failed. Before I go any further, let me say that Rick Martell is a true champion, and he deserves everything that people said about him. But I want another match with Martel with one fall, no time limit. But before I get to Martel, 
Nagasaki, you skunk! And Jim Dillon, you're as root of the evil! Anytime, any place, anywhere, under your condition, have the Nagasaki. Leo Burke is close by. We're going to see if we can grab him for just a moment. Having just completed one of the great matches ever seen here in Atlantic Canada. He's a tired man. We know. Leo, just one moment. If we can get him near the TV camera. Burke and Martel eyeing one another. We feel more with respect now. There we go, Leo Burke, to the delight of the crowd. What a great match. The fans here, thousands on hand here at the Halifax Forum, agreeing one of the great matches ever seen in this historic building. Rick Martel retains the world title. That's it, hope you enjoyed it. One of the great evenings of professional wrestling. Join us next week, once again, we'll pre present international television wrestling.